coming on here for a very short snippet of time um, to really just speak to small businesses, entrepreneurs, people with personal brands that this isn't the time to not do anything while we're in quarantine or under the shelter in place. Um, there's a lot of things happening digitally and all day long, what are people doing? They're on their computers, they're on their iPads, they're on their phones. They are surfing for content to consume all day long. So as a small business or an entrepreneur, or if you have a personal brand, this is the time to actually double up your content marketing strategy because the numbers are hitting through the roof. And I've personally, I've seen it for myself and I've low key have told some others and I just decided, you know what? I'm not really a Facebook live person, but I wanna go on live because I want to make sure as many people receive this information as possible. I noticed that my numbers specifically for Instagram, Instagram live, which I just started doing, I don't even really like Instagram live. I don't, I don't like going live period. Okay. Hey, Tiffany. Um, I noticed my numbers at least doubling. And then as I consistently started doing this, the numbers have tripled and quadrupled for me on social media, because right now that's all people are able to do is surf online. So me as someone that's running a business and I'm a content creator, I have now tripled the amount of content that I'm putting online, knowing that it's being consumed from all of these different avenues. So if you're running a business, I see that um, Tiffany, hey girl, um, you guys are great at doing your live videos and on Instagram and on Facebook. You got to keep that content going, but you got to push up production. Why? I'm a nerd, so I read and I write stuff all the time. I notice my numbers going through the roof. <laughs> and as a person, as soon as I notice it, the same thing I did with you guys with LinkedIn, as soon as I realized that something was up with LinkedIn and that I could get four times the amount of engagement on LinkedIn that I did on Facebook, I told you guys, get your butts on LinkedIn. So now I'm telling you the proof is in the pudding. You can actually Google how social media is taken. If people are on there and you're producing, you're seeing two times more engagement, three times more on views, four times more on engagement. This is where you need to be pushing your services, who you are as a brand, your expertise. Now there's different things that you should be posting. This isn't the time to sell, 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 sell. Okay, we're in the middle of a pandemic. So there are certain types of content that you need to be posting um, and you need to be posting it on a consistent basis. I can't tell you what platform to get on just because that depends on who your audience is and where you typically will see the most engagement. So I can't give you that type of advice unless you ask me in the comments. But I will say that per the stats that we're seeing right now, this was as of two days ago, Instagram and Facebook live views have nearly doubled for content creators. Now, again, I wasn't in, <laughs> Taiyu says, I'm in there like swimwear, girl, let me tell you. So I'm not an Instagram live person, but before I even knew of these stats, I started posting my short videos to Instagram live, but only a snippet and then moving people over to my YouTube channel to watch the full video. And so I've seen some traction there. Um, overall, most brands are seeing a 20 to 50% higher view rate on all of their content. So I don't know how much more in statistics I should have to tell you guys that right now, instead of sitting on the couch and not doing anything, that if you're gonna do anything for yourself, your brand, your business, whatever, just produce, put it out there. I don't care if no one sees it for a day or two, somebody's gonna see it because they're all online and it's all day long. What else are you gonna do? You can't go out. <laughs> <laughs> so you only have this small window of time to take advantage before these orders are lifted and then everybody goes crazy and they don't have time to connect with you. Now, what are the types of content that we're seeing that people are actually connecting with? Right now, it should all be positive, inspirational, empowering. Um, you got a lot of people that are suffering from mental health and depression. Uh, the whole pandemic itself is negative, it's depressing. So this isn't the time to go for a sell, sell, sell. So if you're looking for a brand strategy on what should I be posting on social media, 
It should be relative to whatever your business is, but it should be just give value. I'm not saying give it all away for free, but it should be valuable content and it should be consistent enough that people are going to want to come back and view whatever you post next, knowing that views have now more than doubled. <laughs> 20 to 50% higher. So if you're not leaning in, I really don't want to hear about later on in the game that, oh, Leah, now I want to get in, or can you teach me this LinkedIn workshop, or can you teach me this on social media? I'm just telling you, you have to, this is the time to get in there now. And I love that I'm seeing um, Dr. Kimberly in the comments because she's one of the ones that she produces all day long. <laughs> so if you guys are seeing an up in my content level, as far as me posting more flyers, I'm doing more Q and A's, I'm doing YouTube now, I'm posting on Instagram, I'm doing my Instagram stories, I'm doing Facebook stories, I'm doing Instagram Live, I'm now doing Facebook Live. I hate it. Some of you guys are doing TikTok. So we have some influencers here on Dallas who were on my Q and A last night, who pretty much they're taking over TikTok right now. If that is your thing, I need you doubling up your content on TikTok and really pushing knowing that everybody's living online right now and again it's a small window of time remember we want to be the first in action we, we want to be proactive we don't want to be reactive so i'm telling you we're on the front end of this get on it now and start pushing content all day every day so that people can interact with your brand motivational inspirational empowering you don't have to sell 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 just figure out what value you can give that people need right now to get them through um this devastating time and i promise you when you get out of this you're going to win people are going to want to work with you they're going to want to learn more about you now one thing that i'm going to say um one second you know i get on a roll i'm increasing in lights but not followers on ig how important is that yeah likes are definitely important i would not focus on the follower count just because yolanda if you have an audience so if you have 200 people that follow you but they are 200 engaged followers that when you post something they're talking back to you they want to know more i would much rather have that than a thousand people who are flighty and don't give a crap or maybe they're robots or they're fake so you can try to gradually increase your following producing a lot of valuable content at this time can help you to increase your following um so whatever you're doing now double it and i'm going to tag my friend craig of gig wage in this because he this that's what he tells me all day long is that's great leah but double it so i'm gonna tell you the same thing double your content right now so um i'm glad you're on ig Whatever you're doing on LinkedIn, Yolanda, I want you to double that content as well because LinkedIn is seeing some, some really great traction as well. Um, I was on a roll about something else that I can't, <laughs> I can't remember what it was about the type of content to create. Um, LinkedIn is good, Facebook. If you wanna get on TikTok and that's your jam, that's fine. But right now, while we know that we're seeing double, triple, and for some quadruple, numbers even if it's likes or views on videos yolanda um, and everybody else always have a call to action so if you know you're drawing in this audience right now all eyes are on you you're taking advantage that everybody's on home at home and they're connecting with you digitally do not post without having a call to action so when i say a call to action make sure that yes you're going to post on instagram live but don't post the whole video on instagram live send them over to your website why because the website is where your services are the website is where you're going to get their email address <laughs> the website is maybe where you have some sort of lead generation for a free offer that then connects them to get their email address you see what i'm saying so you have to figure out yes i'm going to produce double the content but maybe there's a strategy to it so I'm going to post on Instagram, but maybe I'm going to make you go to my stories or maybe I'm going to tell you to click the link in my bio so that you can connect with me. And the more that you're more strategic about telling people where to go and how to follow you and connect with you, you will see those numbers increase. Um, Tiffany says, I've been on LinkedIn for about eight years and have never really used it. You know what? I'm not going there with you right now. How can I do the, the, the angry face? There we go. <laughs> Tiffany, we're going to talk. 
anybody that is here or that will watch this live later, if you're not on LinkedIn, you are doing yourself a heavy, heavy, heavy disservice. And I don't care what industry you're in, you could be a creative, you could be a musician, you could be a hairstylist, you could be in the beauty industry, you could be a coach or speaker or whatever, you need to be in LinkedIn. They do not have the same strict um, parameters that you're going to find as far as getting like the momentum going in the algorithm. Oh, I'm going to beat on you <laughs> as Instagram and Facebook. OK, and I don't have enough time to get into it. I have a LinkedIn course. So if you want access to that, just shoot me an email, Leah at Think3 Media after this or shoot me a direct message. Um, but pretty much on LinkedIn, you have access for people to see what you're doing from around the world. And some one person can like your post that has 50,000 followers. And now that post, whether you're friends or you're in the network with that 50,000, they have the potential to see what you're doing. So imagine if I'm telling you right now that you need to double the content you're putting out <laughs> and you need to be creating and not sobbing on the couch. <laughs> This is this is an exciting time. You need to create, create, create. I see Bree's on here. Bree and I are texting all night long about, girl, I just finished my email. <laughs> That's going out tomorrow. Took me two, three hours, but I'm going to do it. Just got done editing my video. That's about to go up on LinkedIn. This is an exciting time because this is these are views you're not paying for. You're not buying Facebook ads. You're not buying Instagram ads. People are just online all day long and all you have to do is serve them. Serve them with what it is that you know, your expertise and keep doing it consistently. But now I want you to double it because now you're gonna see 20 to 50% increase. Okay, should my LinkedIn for my biz be separate from, let me see, I'm shaking this paper at y'all and it's so funny. Be separate from my LinkedIn for my nine to five or can it should be combined? That's an interesting question, Stephanie. I get that all the time, but we're in the gig economy right now where it's common for people to have multiple side gigs in their full-time job. I've seen everybody just put everything on their profile and highlight all those different, what I, what I say is like, it's like your just different personality types within your bio and it's okay. So if your nine to five job is cool with whatever it is that you're selling on the side and it's not in conflict, you can do that all on one LinkedIn page. The way that you make it make sense to your audience is that you just make sure that you have a consistent posting pattern that says, let's just say you have a jewelry business that, and let's just say you're in real estate, but you have a jewelry business. Well, sometimes you're going to share real estate stuff. And the other time you're going to sell about your jewelry business, but it's almost like you're brainwashing your audience. Pretty soon, they're going to get used to the content you're serving them. They're going to be like, oh, I love that multipreneur, Stephanie. You know, she gives me my real estate tips. And then every now and again, she posts some bomb jewelry that I want to buy. So it's not uncommon. Thank girl, this bro is, this is quarantine roots. <laughs> um, but it's not uncommon for people to have three, four, five different jobs lined up, side hustles, whatever, all under one LinkedIn profile. If you go to my profile and connect, you'll see in my headline and on my bio, I have probably six things listed for myself. And that's just because if somebody sees me, I want you to know I'm talented at all these things. Which one do you want me to hire? <laughs> Which one do you want to hire me for? <laughs> and Natalie, thank you. Fro is on point. Um, my hairstylist sent me a DM on Instagram. He does not think so at all. He was like, I can't wait till this is over so I can redo your roots. But I'm just saying, you know, I think they're okay. So all of that to say, my rant, um, you guys can ask me anything. Um, I've had people asking me right now if they should be on TikTok. You know, TikTok at some point two years ago when I went to a digital marketing conference, they were just saying, don't worry about it. That's for Generation Z. That's not for millennials and it's not for Gen X. But I'm seeing everybody and their mom now because we're in quarantine on TikTok. Now, I would recommend you choose a platform that you're good at because I'm telling you to double your content right now. So get really good at being consistent in 
serving on those platforms before you go in and add a new one that you now have to master. So my new ones right now are YouTube, <laughs> which I hate being on video and I hate being on this live. I'm just telling you guys. But my new ones are YouTube and then doing smaller videos on Instagram TV that then leads my audience to um, my YouTube channel for the fuller video that then will lead them to my podcast if they want to subscribe and hear everything on audio. So as you guys can see, um, I'm not just posting for the sake of posting. I'm always going to tell people what I need out of them. I need your email address. I need you to head to the link in my bio. I need you to watch the full video here. I need you to subscribe to my podcast, subscribe to my YouTube channel, because in the end of the day, that's the money. OK, but you can't grow the audience if you're not willing to take the time right now while the numbers are just through the roof um, to produce the content. So that if you're trying to consider where should I be putting my man hours, that's where you should be putting it right now. So double, double, double. And if some people unsubscribe and unfollow you, oh, well, it's all about intentionality and strategy. The numbers do not lie. <laughs> I've had several posts that first week in quarantine that had 54 shares, 49 shares, um, 2,000 views on a, on a video that I didn't boost. So um, however you got to get it, that's how you get it. I have new email subscribers. I don't even know where these people are coming from, but I'm producing. And that's what the game is about at the end of the day. So you're very welcome, Jackie. I know that you guys are um, co-authoring a new book. This is perfect. We don't have anything else to do but to read. <laughs> so however you guys can be thinking of ways to, maybe you're reading them a snippet of the book. You know, maybe you're making um, a short little animated video for the book, or you you create a landing page with some, some lead generation on your website so that, you know, when they hit your website, you know, get a free paragraph or a free chapter, not a free chapter because you probably wrote the chapter, but whatever from my book, and then once they read it, they're hooked and now you get them to buy. You know what I'm saying? So we've just got to be a little bit more intentional. Jody says, I'm with you. I'm so disinterested in being in front of a camera right now. Jody, me too. But once I saw the amount of shares and likes and people that were interacting with me, I told myself to get out of my own way and to just get it done. So I've been staying up every night editing videos, doing short videos, sending out emails to my email marketing list and just serving, serving, serving the audience that I have and trying to grow it, knowing that statistically the spike in the numbers don't lie. Um, what advice do you give for baby boomers to stay in the game? <laughs> That's so funny, Linda. I think I just saw some, you're actually doing a good job because I saw something on my feed from you today. So. It's the same advice for everybody else. You just have to know where your target audience sits. So if you review your audience and they're baby boomers, baby boomers are gonna, some are active on Facebook, a lot will do emails. So you're gonna have a close blend between the two. So I would just double whatever you're posting related to your business, um, stay on this page, um, on Facebook. But, Within those posts, if you have an email marketing list, finding a way to drive some of that traffic to sign up here for more or sign up for email marketing if you don't have an email marketing service already. Because boomers are, um, the reports show that boomers actually will read emails. They're like emails or Facebook. So if you guys need to, if you're confused, you should know where your audience is based on the engagement that they're giving you on social media. Um, so I could tell you right now, Instagram is good for certain things for me, but you know, LinkedIn is popping. If I want some decision makers that are going to hire me for some of my higher dollar services, um, LinkedIn is where I'm posting. If I want to speak at conferences, posting my videos on LinkedIn has been clutch for getting hired for speaking engagements. So you just have to know where that audience is, and then you have to serve them where they are. Um, but my audience. They could be on TikTok now, but I just, it's, it's too much for me. So I'm just going to go with the ones that I'm good at. Okay. 
Um, Nika says, this is very correct. Within my first week of opening my online store, I made $950. Being consistent was my process, reaching outside my friends list, learning correct marketing words to be visible on Google. Guys, thank you so much for that, Nika. I'm going to go ahead and like that comment. If I could like it, you're so welcome, Linda. And reach out if you have any questions whatsoever. Um, that is beyond true what Nika said. Um, if you have to stay consistent in this game. Um, sometimes your friends, though, they will share your content, but you just can't be afraid to put it out there for fear of what they're going to say. You're just going to have to do it. If it's good content, it'll get shared. <laughs> you know, and if you do it consistent enough, then they'll be like, oh, she started an online store. Oh, you know, those that jewelry is kind of hot. Oh, you know, um, that's, that's kind of cool. She also said, Nika said something really cool in her comment too about learning the marketing words and being visible on Google. Guys, I know I'm giving you a lot of platforms, but here's something to consider. I think everybody at this point in time should be on YouTube. So yes, I'm telling you, you need to be on LinkedIn. I'm telling you to start an email marketing list. I'm telling you <laughs> to start a YouTube channel. Why? Because YouTube is the number two search engine outside of Google. So if you ever have Googled anything like, oh, I'm just trying to find Dallas fashion stylist, whatever, you're going to get your promoted ads in that first section. You're going to get a set of videos that will come up, you know, <laughs> and that's because Google uh, is connected with YouTube and YouTube is actual is an actual search engine. So people are going to want the content, so like the blogs and the websites about the information, but some people want the video. So if you're not producing on YouTube, then no one can find you for whatever your expertise is. So that's why I've just beefed up my game to stop start posting um, my content on YouTube right now. And like Nika said, I'm very intentional about how I word my titles. Um, the keywords that I'm putting in the caption, because I'm thinking, how would somebody search for this particular video? So although I like to make things cute, if you guys have ever read some of my articles for Dallas Observer or Inspiring Style Magazine, I like to be real cute and a play on words. I'm not like that on YouTube. <laughs> I am labeling it exactly how somebody would search for it, because I know that YouTube is a search engine. And so... I would add YouTube if you can if you can really fit that into your content marketing schedule. Um, Akiba says, what does consistent look like? Are you posting two times a week and how many videos a week? No, ma'am. So I was posting on Instagram before the pandemic. I was only posting when I had something good to say, so probably once a week. <laughs> and on YouTube, it was less than that. And once we all moved inside, because I'm in marketing, I knew that digital was about to blow up. And so I told myself, Leah, you're about to be a content producing machine. And so now I am posting every single day, every day. I am posting at least two to three videos on YouTube a week. I'm editing them myself. So if there's a fuller video on YouTube, that means I've posted three shorter videos on my Instagram lives. And those are two separate editing <laughs> processes to have both. I can automatically download the audio from whatever I'm posting on YouTube. And now I'm kicking that over to my podcast. So my podcast, I hadn't posted on in a year. And then I noticed that this was happening. And now I'm posting to my podcast um, to at least two to three times a week. And so it's been, it's been a machine, but I've seen the views. And even on my blog, I, I have a publishing company in New York that writes everything on my website, but I've started chiming in as well. And the one that I did last week is already at 2000 hits. I pulled those numbers yesterday cause I had to give them to a, a publicist, but 2000 hits on one article. So I've just made a commitment that I know these numbers aren't going to last for long. So I'm just going to lean in and I'm going to produce as much as I can, knowing that it's going to even itself out as soon as we're, we're out of this, when everybody goes back to going to their events and not paying anybody any attention. But right now, while I have your attention, 
let me let you know a little bit about me and what we're doing over here at Think Through Media. Okay, so uh, Makiba, I hope that answers your question. Stephanie says, yeah, I have a channel, but have yet to post as it's a lot to learn and process to get the videos just right. Um, are you talking about YouTube? And, you know, a lot of the time, it's just you just got to put it out there. You, you know, I learned YouTube along the way. I learned and my views aren't crazy. I just see them kind of grow and fester themselves. There was some stuff I did when Periscope was hot that I put over on YouTube because I'm always about recording one time and then I'll shoot it out in five different directions. Cause I'm like, however you get this content is however you get it. And so I have a Periscope video right now from a couple of years ago that's at 4,500 views. It just takes time to get it at that level. So you just have to get comfortable enough. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just going to go ahead and click publish. I can always go back and edit it. So like the other day I was posting my videos and the thumbnail was always something crazy with me, like, uh, uh, like right with my mouth open. But I figured out that Canva lets you create these beautiful thumbnails. <laughs> so when you go to my page, it's now this beautiful, um, you know, title screen with the pictures of my speakers and all that instead of me like mid sentence, like, mm, okay. But I had to learn that along the way. So just get out of your own way and just publish, publish, publish. You can always go back and edit. You can always go back and read an article to see how to maximize SEO for YouTube. But you just gotta put it out there. And then share, share with your audience. And don't give a flip about what your current, like close ecosystem says, your friends and family. At the end of the day, the stats say they're not even the ones that's gonna do business with you. It's the people outside that circle. But they can't get to you if you're not putting it out there. Just saying. All right. Good info. Love getting the likes and the shares, but more interested in monetizing. Yeah, it really just depends on what platform you're on. Um, that The monetization comes with that. So I can tell you for Instagram, if you guys are speakers or, oops, stay on this page. I but they can't hear you if you're not putting it out there. Sorry. Just saying. <laughs> Sorry, guys. All right. Good info. Love getting the likes and the shares, but more interested in monetizing. Yeah, it really just depends on what platform. Sorry, guys. Lost y'all. I don't even know what just happened. <laughs> okay, so let me back. It keeps going back to this. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I got the channel. Okay, I answered your question. Oh, the monetization piece. So it really just depends on what platform you're at, Makiba. Um, nine times out of ten, especially with Instagram, they're now brands are now looking for micro influencers. So you don't have to be at the 25k, 30k, 40k level uh, that people thought brands were looking at before, okay? Now uh, you can be a micro, you can have grow to 5,000 followers, and in some cases between two and 5,000 followers and be able to work with brands. So there's a company now that I, um, that just came in, onto my radar, it's actually an app, it's called We Are 8 I'll put it in the chat box. Now it's like on the bare, minimum of influencer marketing. If you just want to know what it's like to work in an influencer campaign, you can make $20 here, $30 there. Um, but they're a phenomenal monetized brand platform and they're not really looking at the number of followers you have, but they're more so looking at who engages with your content. And so while I would love for you guys to build followers, build follower followers, I would much rather you guys they like to see the likes and they like to see people commenting and sharing. Like that, that's the wheelhouse that shows that you have good content. Okay. Um, thank you guys. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Hey, Anna. Um, hey, Shanta. Yeah, she co-signed. We are eight. It's fun. I'm working on a campaign for guarding like vegan, vegan meat, you know? So that's fun. I get $20 to post about the orange chicken that they have. I mean, that's a fun way, you know, to be involved and monetize your platform. It's not always about the followers. So on Instagram, um, 
they are moving that number down if that makes you feel better. They're more of looking at the percentage of people that, okay, if you have this many followers, how many engage every single time that you post? And I'll tell you guys this much. The key on Instagram and LinkedIn is more about your documentation. So there's a lot of brands. This light is like making me really, really hot. So I apologize. The key is more about your Instagram stories and documenting that process. I'm seeing a way more engagement in my Instagram stories than I am on my actual feed. So I spend a lot of time documenting my day, putting funny things in my Instagram stories, um, doing polls with people to have them, you know, talk back to me. Um, because working with brands, some of them ask for those statistics. They want to see how many people are viewing your stories. They want to see how many people are is sharing your content. So likes, comments, shares, and be sure to really engage in those in the storytelling process on LinkedIn or in your Instagram. I know that was a lot. <laughs> I've been on here 30 minutes. I only thought I was going to be on here for like eight, nine, or 10 to tell you guys, what are you doing? Produce double the content. I have the numbers. So if you guys, um, the latest article that's come out on this, I will post it in the comments as soon as I get off the live. But if you want to Google it, it came out um, for fashion influencers with Vogue Business that showed that the influencers were getting 20 to 50% more views. But even though those were those girls, I saw it myself and I'm nowhere on their level. I saw it before the article came out. And that's when I knew I just stopped everything and was like, I'm about to <laughs> kick up my content calendar ridiculously while everybody's at home, hopefully under quarantine. Kim says, my company's audience is on Facebook. Any tips on beating the algorithm to get my content? to push through and get seen. Unfortunately, if it's set up as a business, there's not necessarily a beating the algorithm uh, strategy because Facebook actually wants you as a business to have to pay for your content to get seen, especially on people's personal feeds. Like that was the reason why they set up business pages is because people were complaining that people were, um, selling and doing all of their business stuff on a personal level. And so that's why they have that blue boost button because they're wanting, they're like, we're not going to give you free advertisement. You need to pay for that. And so just a short term strategy is getting people to like, comment and share just to get it going. But long term, that won't work. Um, most businesses really need to have some sort of small budget for Facebook marketing. Um, to boost every now and again if you're a smaller business. And if you do that, my suggestion is to always have a call to action because I wouldn't want you to put money behind a post and not send them to your website or send them an offer where you can get their email address or send them the link to the shop now button. If you're gonna pay for it, um, make your money back on it. So unfortunately on business pages, it's purposeful that your content is like a very, very low percentage of being seen, no matter how many people you have that have liked your page. Um, Brandy says, what's We Are Eight? Uh, we Are Eight is like an influencer agency that works with brands, but their caveat is that they work with regular people. So you don't have to be some high profile blogger. You don't have to have millions of followers. They wanna work with everyday people that they know can connect with um, their audience around them. So I would just look them up. Um, it's an app. And so they'll send you campaigns once you connect your Instagram to them and your Facebook and all the other stuff. But it's really cool because they don't have all the red tape that normally you have to go through to work with an influencer agency. So I've gotten some pretty, pretty cool ones. You know, it's cool to make a hundred bucks every now and again. Just saying. Thanks, Kim. Um, any other questions? I kind of went on a rant. <laughs> I wasn't planning to. Uh, but produce. And to Kim's point, and I know they're probably going to shut this video down, but Facebook from a business page is going to be the hardest to capitalize on for free. You're going to have to pay for it. 
The other platforms that are seeing more organic engagement without Boost will be LinkedIn. Um, and if you can somehow create IG videos that will go into IG Instagram Live or start doing a lot more in your stories, you'll see some traction there. So, but all of you guys should be hopping over on LinkedIn. I know I've been saying it for the last two years, but I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. And you want to do it before they start charging you like Facebook is charging you. Because that's the number one complaint. I'm posting and no one can see it. They're doing it on purpose. They want you to pay for it. LinkedIn right now is fair game. They're not making you pay for those views. So I had a video the other day, 5,000 views, 6,500 views. I have one that's still going around. And so if you post every single day, you're just going to be, you're going to have content in the funnel that's constantly getting seen by people all over the world. So I can't stress that enough that you guys should be posting double and really leaning into a lot of these platforms. So, all right. Um, I'm going to log off because I was supposed to work out by now. <laughs> I'll put all my info in the comment section. I will put the article that's referencing the social media uh, spike into the comments as well. And I'll also put my info if you guys want to see more um, from me or let me know what else you guys want me to, to talk about. I'm going to link up with a blogger. We're going to do a, a, Q and, a Zoom Q&A on TikTok. I refuse to get on it, but she thinks she's going to change my mind. So this will be something interesting. Um, Gail says, you're correct. I have a catering business, Creole Cajun Queen. This is why I'm working out as soon as I get off this post. And I've been doing cooking videos. And also, I have a YouTube channel. That's phenomenal, Gail. I mean, what are we having to do? In, you know, while we're sheltered in place, right? We got to eat, we have to cook. And while I may not really just go in there and get busy like you do in the kitchen, I like to watch it. If it's falling on my feed, if it's good lighting, if it looks good, and if you're posting it consistently every single day, I may end up following you. And if you're consistent in those videos saying, hey guys, if you don't want to miss my next Creole meal that's mouthwatering and flavorful and all that stuff while you're doing your quarantine and chill, you need to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And then what do I do? Subscribe. <laughs> so that's absolutely wonderful. So everybody should be hopping in on YouTube as well. And the beauty of it, you guys, you can do everything from this little device right here everything you don't have to go out and buy a crazy ring light and all that other stuff you can do everything from this little thing right here and this ring light that i had that was making me sweat cost like it has the phone holder um, that you can place your phone on and it has the actual light that actually is linked up to the usb in your computer so it doesn't even go in an outlet um this thing was like 19 dollars on amazon and it's perfect. All my Zoom calls, all my videos, that's what I'm using. So find you a little desk ring light on Amazon and keep it pushing. <laughs> okay? All right. If you guys have any other questions, but it has the phone holder. I'm like, um, that you can place your phone on and it has click in between too many screens. But, oh, you have the same one? I'm telling y'all. It's not rocket science. We just make it too hard. So get out of your own way. I look forward to seeing all the content that you guys are going to produce. Remember, double your content. Go on those platforms you've already mastered. Don't try to add in a million new ones. If you are, LinkedIn, YouTube. And always have a call to action. So this is all about brand exposure. It may not be about sales right now because a lot of people are struggling. A lot of people don't have the financial means. But what you can do is grow your audience and grow brand awareness. Let them just know who you are. So then once they get out of this and they can recover, they'll remember that Gail posted those amazing videos and like, wow, I wonder where she's at right now. Or they're just, they're, they're really linked into you and now they're, they're one of your main followers once you get out of this. And so that's what it's about, okay? Call to action, build your email marketing list, do something, just don't sit on the couch and, and pout, all right? All right. Well, I love y'all. I got to go work out. 
Billy Blanks and Tybo in my living room is calling me and I hope y'all have a blessed and safe one. So I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.